Every day, everywhere, we're bombarded with countless numbers of ads and articles all telling us how to lose fat. But did you know our bodies already know how? As we eat, our body converts our food into glucose, a simple sugar that travels through our bloodstream. This glucose is the primary food for our cells. Whether it's a muscle cell or a brain cell or a cell in our heart, they all feed on glucose. As glucose moves through our bloodstream, our pancreas produces a hormone called insulin. Insulin is the gatekeeper of our cells. It opens the door, allowing glucose to enter and be used for our energy needs. Without it, our cells can't be fed. What if we eat more than we need? Well, along with our brain cells and muscle cells, we also have fat cells. Our cells never eat more than they need, so when we have more glucose than our cells can use, the excess amount is stored in our fat cells where it is converted into free fatty acids. Once the glucose is out of the bloodstream, with our cells having been fed and the surplus having been stored away in our fat cells, then insulin closes the doors to our cells and slowly leaves our body. When our body needs more energy, or glucose, and we don't have any food handy, it turns to the fat cells and the free fatty acids stored inside them. The free fatty acids leave our fat cells and go right back into the bloodstream to feed all our other cells. They don't need insulin to open the cell doors. That's why they're referred to as free fatty acids. This natural process of storing fat when you have too much glucose and burning fat when you don't have enough glucose is how your body was designed to work. And in a perfect world, eating a perfect diet, everything works perfectly. Unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world and most of us don't even come close to eating a perfect diet. As a result, we don't benefit from this natural process very often. Instead, we suffer by storing too much fat and rarely, if ever, burning any. Let's take a look at a typical breakfast in our imperfect world. When we get up in the morning, the first thing most of us have is a breakfast fairly high in sugar and processed foods. When this kind of food enters our body, it's converted into glucose very quickly and rushes into the bloodstream. The more sugary the food, the faster and higher our blood sugar or glucose level rises. Our pancreas senses the sudden spike in glucose and responds by pumping out the insulin, creating an insulin spike to correspond to the fast rising glucose. The insulin does its job and opens the doors to our cells. All our working cells are fed and all the excess glucose is then stored in our fat cells. Now this process happens fast. Once insulin arrives, the glucose level in our bloodstream goes back down pretty quickly. However, it takes much longer for insulin to leave our body. So even though the glucose level in our bloodstream comes down fairly quickly, our insulin level remains high. And this can be a significant problem because as long as there is insulin still in our body, we can't access the free fatty acids stored in our fat cells. Remember, free fatty acids don't need insulin to allow them into the cells, but they do need insulin to be gone before they can leave our fat cells. Our body needs to eat continually but the free fatty acids can't leave the fat cells. On come the cravings, the irritability, and so we eat. Our glucose levels spike right back up, our body releases even more insulin, the doors open, the cells are once again fed, and excess glucose is put into our fat cells. With our insulin level remaining high, we're still not able to release any fatty acids, so we continue adding to the fat storage, but never taking any out. This cycle continues through lunch, mid-afternoon snacks, dinner, and so on. We literally end up bathing our bodies in insulin all day long and for much of the night. After a while, all that insulin takes a toll. We age much faster than normal and many of us develop type 2 diabetes. In this animation, we discuss the concept of physical activity and exercise as they relate to obesity. In humans, there is a fine balance between energy intake and energy expenditure. Energy intake is in the form of food, and energy expenditure is in the form of the basal metabolic rate and physical activity. The difference between energy intake and energy expenditure is the net energy balance. If intake exceeds expenditure, then a net positive energy balance occurs. Energy expenditure depends on a number of factors. This includes the starting body weight, the basal metabolic rate, and physical activity. With regard to physical activity, there are several key variables including the frequency, intensity, duration, and type of activity done. Let us examine energy consumption. 
One honey glazed donut is shown, which has approximately 300 kilocalories. The energy intake from the consumed donut is equal to the energy consumed by moderate walking for 30 to 60 minutes at 3 miles per hour. If an individual walks for an hour at 3 miles per hour, they will expend approximately 300 kilocalories, the same as what was contained in the consumed donut. If an individual walks daily for one hour at approximately 3 miles per hour, this type of activity would lead to weight loss. This assumes that the individual does not consume any extra calories and has a net negative energy expenditure. If this continues for a period of two to four months, body weight is reduced as depicted. The initial weight loss is the result of a negative net energy balance. The negative energy balance is because energy expenditure exceeds energy intake. After the initial weight loss, the individual continues to do the same type of exercise, that is, one hour of moderate walking daily. The chart depicts changes in body weight over time. Individuals are often frustrated and surprised that the weight is not continuing to decrease despite regular walking. They have reached a plateau. The reason behind the weight loss plateau is that with decreased body weight, the basal metabolic rate also decreases. When the basal metabolic rate decreases, there is a decrease in total energy expenditure. If the discouraged individual quits their daily walking exercise, the weight is gained again, at a quicker pace. The weight is regained as a result of a positive energy balance being created. Energy expenditure is now less since the physical activity has been stopped. By keeping the same intensity and duration of walking without making any changes in the diet, energy intake, the individual would enter a weight maintenance phase. This is characterized by gaining a small amount of weight. The weight maintenance is the result of an energy balance being established within the body, where energy intake essentially equals energy expenditure. If there is no change in energy balance, there will not be any further change in weight. What must be done to end the weight loss plateau? Several options exist to maintain a negative net energy balance. These involve either decreasing energy intake or increasing energy expenditure. Options include restricting calories further or increasing the frequency or the intensity or the duration of the exercise. In summary then, weight loss plateaus are expected and can only end with continued exercise and a net negative energy balance. Stopping exercise or increasing calories will lead to weight gain. If one continues to exercise to maintain a net negative energy balance, weight loss will be promoted.